morning. morning. Welcome you to worship at Tree of Life on the 13th Sunday after Pentecost. Today our thoughts are on the gift of the Holy Spirit that God has sent to us so that we can understand and believe God's word. Our service is printed in the service folder beginning with our first hymn, Speak, O Savior, I am listening. May God bless us as we worship together this morning. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Father has been merciful to us and has given his only son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift of grace that we come into your presence and offer true and faithful service. Grant that our worship on earth may always be pleasing to you, and in the life to come, give us the fulfillment of what you have promised through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture lesson for this Sunday is recorded in Proverbs chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. There are many definitions of wisdom, but the true definition of wisdom is found in God's word. Wisdom seeks the, the Lord's will. We read. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point of the city, Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, Come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. This is the word of our Lord. We join together in our psalm for today. I ask you to sing the refrain is the appropriate places and I'll read the verses. We'll begin by singing the refrain. is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the way of sinners, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers. Blessed are they. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are they. Second scripture lesson, our epistle lesson, also serves as our sermon text today. It was recorded by Paul, his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. It also calls on us to follow the wisdom of the Lord. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Word of God. Hallelujah! The Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hallelujah. 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 Please stand for. 
for our gospel lesson. Today's gospel was recorded by John in chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. In these verses, Jesus again refers to himself as the living bread, telling us that all who follow him will be given eternal life. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. And the Jews began to argue sharply among themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. This is God's word. Praise, Praise be to you, you O Christ. Christ. Having heard the word of God, let's join together to confess our faith. We use today the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I invite our children to come forward for a children's message. Good morning. How's everybody today? Who can tell me what this is? Trophy. It's a trophy. How do you get one of these? Win the race. You win the race. And in order to win the race, let's say there's 10 people running. How many people would get one of these? Just, just the first place person? Just one? So if you want to get one of these, what do you have to do? How do you make sure you can be the first place runner? Take it home. Well, you take it home if you win it, but how do you win it? What would you have to do? Run, run faster than To run faster than everyone else, so you have to practice and practice and practice. Is there any other way that someone might get one of these? <coughs> Just when they win. Just when you win? Yeah. Could you buy one in a store, maybe? No. Well, I think you could. You wouldn't get it for winning a race, but you could have a trophy. What if somebody else won and you took the trophy? Would that be fair? No, that wouldn't be fair, but you could get one that way, couldn't you? There's only one right way to get that trophy, isn't there? You have to win the race, right? What do you think this is a picture of? Jesus. Okay. God. God? Where do you think he is? In heaven. In heaven. Who do you think all those people are? Angels. They're angels. Who else is going to be in heaven? Jesus. Jesus. God. Angels. You. 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 How do we get to go and live with Jesus in heaven? Uh, after we die. Okay, and in order to get to go to heaven, what do we have to do? Pay our sins for Jesus. Have our sins paid by Jesus. Is there any other way to get to heaven? No. No. Just one way. Just one way. There might be several ways to get a trophy, but only one right way. There aren't any other ways to get to heaven. You have to believe in Jesus as your Savior. You can't buy heaven. You can't steal it away from someone else. You have to believe in Jesus as your Savior. 
it's kind of nice to win one of these once in a while, but it's really going to be nice when we get to go to heaven because of Jesus. So let's remember that in our service today and let's thank Jesus for what he's done so we can be in heaven with him. Let's do that with a prayer right now. Dear Jesus, I thank you that you won the prize for me when you paid for my sins and that you have now given me that prize, faith in my heart. Keep my faith strong throughout my life so that I can come live with you in heaven. In your name we pray, amen. You go back to your seats and we'll continue with our hymn of the day. consideration is our epistle lesson for today from Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 20. We're going to be reading verses 15 and 16. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. This is the word of God. In the name of our wise and loving Savior, Jesus Christ, dear friends in Christ. A little boy arrived at his first day in kindergarten with tears filling his eyes. He had been given his birth certificate by his parents as he left the house to take to the school office. And when he got to school, he realized he had lost it. Well, his teacher was very familiar with the first day jitters of five-year-olds and she went to comfort him and said, what, what's the matter, what's troubling you? And in his five-year-old way of understanding, he said to her, I've lost my excuse for being born. <laughs> I think we all understand what he meant, but what he said actually conveys quite a wise thought. Aren't there many people in the world today who have actually lost their excuse for being born? God placed us on this earth to do a number of things while we're here, but most importantly, God placed us here as a time of grace to come to know Jesus as our Savior. But along the way, many people get distracted from that one important mission. Many people get led down side paths in lives that take them away from the Lord, and in so doing, they lose their excuse 
or purpose for being born. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter that serves as our text for today to Christians in Ephesus, Greece, to whom he had brought the message of the gospel. As he preached to them God's word and taught them about Jesus and his love for them, he saw that gospel begin to take root in their heart to give them an excuse for being born. He didn't want them to lose that gospel message, and so he wrote this encouraging letter to them, a letter that also serves to encourage us today to always hold on to that precious gospel message because it helps us to live wisely in an evil world. As we do that, we are taught through the gospel to understand what God's will is. What does God want? What does he want of us? And secondly, then, to understand that we are to live a life of thanksgiving because of, because of what he has done for us. Paul says in our text, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. I would imagine that little boy was told to be careful when his parents handed him his birth certificate. Well, when he wasn't careful, it brought a lot of sorrow into his life. You and I today, through the pen of the Apostle Paul, are being told by God to be careful. And if we don't listen to God and we're not careful, there will be an awful lot of sorrow in our life, especially on Judgment Day when we lose our ticket to heaven. Jesus tells us through these words that the days are evil. And I don't think you have to be a detective and scour the evidence to agree with that statement. It's very evident to us that the days are evil. The goals in life seem to be good goals that people set for themselves. They want to be prosperous. They want to be successful. They want to be well-liked. But sometimes the paths that they take in order to achieve those goals aren't in line with God's word. We hear people often talking about their freedom, that we should be tolerant and accepting of them, that they should be able to express themselves as individuals. That, that's what the world is teaching us to do so that people can achieve their goals. Under the, the name of social advancement and progression, people are being told that you can do whatever it takes so that you can reach your goals in life. Unfortunately, God's word and God's will aren't often taken into account when people consider how to do that. The foolishness of such, an, such a lifestyle or such a, an approach to life can be seen already back in the Old Testament example of the man named Lot. Lot was the nephew of Abraham, and he too was blessed by God with large herds and flocks of animals. So blessed, in fact, that he and his uncle Abraham couldn't keep their animals on the same property any longer. So they decided that they would go out and they would search for new pasture lands. And when they came to a new area, Abraham allowed Lot to choose first which lands he wanted. Well, Lot looked and saw that the lands around the city of Sodom and Gomorrah were very fertile. The grazing land there looked perfect for his flocks, and he decided that it would be in his best business interest to choose that part of the property. He didn't take into consideration, though, the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah that neighbored it, which Moses said the men of Sodom were wicked and were sinful, sinning greatly against the Lord. That didn't seem to be much of a consideration for Lot. He needed grazing land, he saw it was good there, and so he took his, his animals there. Over time, he actually moved into the town of Sodom, and when God then came to Abraham and said, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah because they are so wicked, Abraham realized Lot was in jeopardy too. But it wasn't just his earthly life that was at stake. Living among these people who were sinning greatly he had also put his soul at risk. He would have been bombarded daily with the unwise choices of the people of Sodom. He would have been surrounded by people who didn't care what God's will was, who didn't seek God's counsel, who didn't attend church regularly, who didn't care what the Bible said. And so God, through Abraham then, announced that he was going to destroy those people 
and Abraham pleaded for them. Lot was rescued from the destruction that came, but as he fled the city, his wife, against the command of God, turned to look back, almost because she didn't really want to give up what she had there. And we're told she immediately turned into a pillar of salt. She disobeyed God and lost her life. And if that was an indication of her faith, she also lost her eternal life. Lots, we could say, escaped by the skin of his teeth because of the faithfulness of his uncle Abraham, who was there to, to encourage him and warn him and, and try to help him. You see, there's always a possibility in life when we have decisions to make that there's a wise decision to make and an unwise decision to make. And sometimes the two seem to blur a little bit because the wise personal business decision might not always be the wise personal spiritual decision. There are some decisions that are more important in life than others, some that have a bigger impact on us and the people around us, but all of them combined determine who we are and whether we're living as wise or unwise. In our text, we're encouraged, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. And then again, Paul says, be careful. Be very careful. The decisions that we make may be wise from an earthly perspective. That, that new job promotion that's going to offer better benefits and higher salary, but perhaps will take us away from a, a Christian church where we can worship. It might be a good business decision to say I'll take that job, but it might not be a wise spiritual decision for yourselves or your family. Lot found that out when he made the business decision to live near Sodom and Gomorrah, but not the spiritually wise decision. And so it is when we have decisions to make, we want to protect ourselves from the foolishness that might portray itself as wisdom. And in order to do that, we have to understand what God's will is. When we understand what God's will is, the psalmist said we have begun to acquire wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And in order to understand what God's will is, we have to go to the place where he has revealed it to us, and that is his word. Long ago, one of our church fathers said that Christian education of our members in our churches should be our number one priority. And then he said, the church that does not concern itself with the Christian education of its members does not need to worry about its future. It has none. Christian education is exactly what it says, teaching about Christ. And when we teach people about Christ, about what he has done for us, and about what he wants us to do, then we fill them with the true wisdom from God's word. And there is no more important thing that God's churches on earth can do for its people than to teach them about Jesus. And that is especially true, as Paul pointed out in the Times that he was living and in our times today because the days are evil. Tree of Life wants to be that fortress of safety and security in the midst of these evil days. We have been blessed with faithful people, people who know God's word and who love the Lord because of it. We have been blessed with people who find joy in serving the Lord through this church. Your willingness to serve on our boards and committees or in volunteer groups. Your willingness to come to church on Sunday mornings to teach Sunday school and Bible classes. Your willingness to learn about the Lord shows your true wisdom. A wisdom that will be blessed here on earth, but more importantly, eternally in heaven. You are protecting yourselves from the foolishness of the world which sometimes appears wise, but if it is worldly, always leads to destruction. You are protecting yourselves and your family not only during your lifetime here on earth, but more important, eternally in heaven. Paul said that we should make the most of every opportunity that we have to do that. We should take advantage not only of the Sunday worship services we have or the midweek Bible classes, but the devotional material that you can take to your homes, the Bibles that are yours freely to read, the discussions you can have with fellow Christians in your family or your neighbors. 
All of these are opportunities to grow in your wisdom of the Lord. And as we grow in that wisdom and we recognize what God has done for us and how much that means for us, it's only natural for us then to want to serve the Lord. Paul realized that the lifeblood of the Ephesians church was the love that God was putting into it through his word. He had come to these people with that gospel message of sins forgiven through Jesus, and he had seen how the Holy Spirit had worked that message into their hearts, and it had changed their lives, not only their lives on earth, but their eternal lives. And they were overjoyed to know now that they were going to be in heaven one day because of Jesus, their Savior. You and I have had that same message brought to us. You and I have had the Holy Spirit work through that message, teaching us to know Jesus as our Savior. We live every day knowing that if this is my last day on earth, it'll be my first in heaven. We know that all of those horrible sins that we commit, either publicly or privately, have all been paid for by the blood of Jesus. The guilt that was eating away at King David when he tried to bear his own sin and hide it we don't have to endure because God says, lay your sins at the foot of the cross and I'll wash them clean in the blood of my son. Knowing what he has done for us, we live our lives now not in fear of that day when we'll face our judge, but in anticipation, looking forward to the day when the heavens will open up, the angels will blow the trumpets and we'll see Jesus returning to take us to be with him. And as we do that, we want to show the Lord our thankfulness. <coughs> For the Christians in Ephesus, Paul said, a beginning point for you is to, first of all, stop doing what the unbelievers around you are doing. He said in our text, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Getting drunk was a common thing at that time, and Paul <coughs> noticed it when he was in Ephesus. And he told the Christians that because of the love of God, you're to be different from them. Don't just join in because it's the thing to do but rather be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now we can take that one example from Paul and we can generalize it to avoiding any of the sins that surround us. It's easy for someone to say, everyone else is doing it. Or to use the excuse, well, that's what you've got to do to get ahead in life nowadays. But Paul and the Lord tell us that's not the truth. It's an excuse. Instead, being filled with the Holy Spirit means using the means of grace, the word and the sacrament, so that our hearts are so in tune with God that those things no longer appeal to us. That the sinful pleasures that so many pursue become something that we abhor and we hate. We rather want to see the will of the Lord done in everything we do. Paul said, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. But now doing that doesn't come naturally. All of us have to admit with King David that we were conceived and born in sin. And conceived and born in sin, we were on a path to continue to sin, which would lead to eternal destruction. We had to be lifted off that path. And so with King David, we also pray, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. We sometimes use those words after our sermon, after hearing that gospel message from the Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit will work through it to make us right with God again, to wash away our sins, to enable us to serve him in faithfulness. And God answers those prayers. He sends that Holy Spirit to bring us his wisdom, but to also bring us his power. And as we continue to fill ourselves with that gospel message, our lives of Christian service become more and more natural for us. It's not something we have to work at to do, it's something that we enjoy doing, something that the Lord gives us many opportunities to do, and we take advantage of those opportunities. Paul encouraged the Ephesians to speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ always giving thanks to God. Everything that we do is to be in recognition of all that God has done for us. Everything that we do is our opportunity to say, God, I appreciate what you did. I am so thankful for what you did, and here's my little thank you note. 
the psalms, the hymns, the spiritual songs, the way that we use our ability to speak to one another, the way that we live and, and interact with one another, all of that is our thank you to God for what he has done for us. And as we continue to use that gospel from God, he promises to continue to strengthen us to do those things. If your life hasn't always been what you want it to be for the Lord, it does no good for you to say, well, I'll try harder. God gives us strength through his word and through the sacrament. The more that we fill ourselves with the Holy Spirit, the better we will be enabled to serve and to thank God. And as we live our lives in that way, we'll realize that everything else isn't important. We will realize that our excuse for being born, our purpose for being on earth, is to serve the Lord here on earth until we can serve him forever in heaven. Then what Jesus said will make perfect sense to us. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? Hang on to your excuse for being born. Be very careful because the days are evil. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion looking for that one opportunity when you in weakness stray from the Lord. And he'll pounce on you. But if you are very careful, if you are wise in the Lord, you will always be safe in the Lord. And knowing that gives us every reason to thank and to praise, to serve and obey him. May God bless us with hearts that are wise, hearts that understand the will of the Lord, and hearts that live thankfully in the will of the Lord. And as we live those lives, may we, may we be a light in these evil days a light that points to our Savior Jesus, that others too may know his love and understand their excuse for being born. God bless us today and always through our Savior Jesus. Amen. And now the peace of God which goes beyond our understanding will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our offerings for the Lord will now be gathered. As the offerings are brought to the altar, you're invited to stand and join in the hymn response. church this morning, you'll notice that the Lord's Prayer is a hymn verse that we'll be singing. Our pianist will introduce that hymn for us before we begin to sing.
In praise and adoration, O Lord, we come before you, our hearts filled with gratitude. Once again, your almighty power has brought us safely through the night. In you, O Lord, is our trust. You shower down on us your kindness and mercy. We acknowledge, O Lord, that in spite of your mercies, we have not always walked in wisdom. We've wasted precious time and have failed to discipline ourselves in food and drink. We've neglected opportunities to worship with our fellow Christians in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. We've murmured and complained when we should have been making melodies in our hearts to your honor. We fail to thank you for everything, including our adversities, which strengthen our faith. Fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may readily embrace and ever hold fast to your Son, Jesus Christ. As he has given us his flesh to eat and his blood to drink, help us recognize in him the source of our life. Give hope to the discouraged and lift the spirits of the depressed to be with all who worship here in your house. For Jesus' sake, amen. now to prepare ourselves for the reception of the Lord's Supper. The order of service begins on the top of page 11. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who promised that wherever two or three come together in his name, there he is with them to shepherd his flock till he comes again in glory. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Christ on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he also took the cup gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying drink from it all of you this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Oh Christ, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Yeah. 
may be seated. You're now invited to come forward for the sacrament of the altar as you're directed by our ushers. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given on the cross for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Your sins are forgiven. body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was given into death for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Take Jesus Christ. This is the true body of your Savior given into death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shed on the cross for the remission of all of your sins. Take and drink. The true blood Take of drink. Our Lord and Savior, this Jesus is the Christ. true blood of your Savior shed for your sins. May this true body and blood of our Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. Amen.
Savior Jesus Christ, shed on the cross, take and drink. This is the true love of your Savior, shed for your sins. May the true body and blood of our Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You can depart in peace. is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which he gave into death for the forgiveness of your sins. And take drink. This is the true blood of your Savior, which he shed on the cross for your sins. Take drink. This is the true blood of your Savior. Take and drink. This is the true blood of your Savior shed for your sins. May this true body and blood of our Savior strengthen you and keep you in true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. Depart in peace. Amen. Please stand and we'll join in thanksgiving beginning with the hymn verse we praise and thank we with praise and thanksgiving to the Lord, for he is good. Your mercy endures forever. Let us pray. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated for our final hymn.
morning once again. Good morning. Good morning. Just a couple of uh, reminders from your bulletin. Tomorrow night we do have a ladies' wow meeting, our women of the word. You are invited to join us at 7 o'clock here at the church. There's a number of things that we're working on, and you're certainly uh, a welcome addition to help us as we go through those different things as we serve our Lord. Uh, next Sunday, following our worship and Bible study, we'll be having our fifth Sunday of the month potluck dinner. We invite you to bring along your favorite tailgating foods, shrimp, wings, burgers, those kind of things. And if you're so inclined, bring a camp chair out and we'll uh, tailgate out in the parking lot. We'll also have some seats inside if it's a little warm next Sunday. So bring along a, a dish to share and join the fun next week. We'll have a couple little games and I hear there might even be water balloons for the kids next Sunday. Um, coming up in a couple of weeks, we have our LWMS um, fall rally. It's actually on October 3rd, but by September 10th, they would like to have our offering. Now, we've just joined the Heritage Circuit of the LWMS not too long ago. Uh, there are two rallies, one in the fall and one in the spring, and they take an offering at each of those. The little mite boxes or mission boxes you were given, they, uh, the change you've collected in there can be brought and put into the, the big LWMS box that Kim's prepared for us. And we'll send it off to them by September 10th so that they'll have that by the October rally. So. If you don't have mission boxes and you just want to make a donation to the LWMS, you can do so. We have a local Wells mission. It's a church in Tennessee and also a world mission. We're helping out with some Latin America efforts. Those are what those offerings will go to help. So bring those along the next couple Sundays and help us with those uh, collections. And then on September 13th, we will be having our kickoff Sunday. Um, there'll be an outdoor service at 1030. You're invited to come a little early if you'd like. We'll have some tables set up that will show you some of the opportunities you have for Bible study in the fall, and then some of the service opportunities if you want to join a certain committee or help us out in, in any of those ways. We'll have a special service, and then following that, there will also be an outdoor picnic uh, put together by our leadership team. Are there any other announcements for today? Yes, Scott. Uh, just a reminder that the uh, fall Sunday school program will be starting up on September 20th, and uh, we're in the process of solidifying our roster of teachers and co-teachers, so if you're interested or inclined to serve in that way, let myself or let Pastor know so that we can get that coordinated. Okay. And then we're also at the point where we need to replenish our list of volunteers for Kids Church. We have the next Kids Church will be the first Sunday in September, which will be the 6th. I don't have anybody scheduled from here to the end of the year, so we need to think about filling in the first and third Sunday between now and, and the end of the year. Um, I sent an email to those that have, that have reached out to me that were served in the past. Um, haven't received any responses, so I'm hoping that between now and the sixth we can kind of get that schedule completed. So if you'd like to serve, uh, his church is offered during the worship, during the sermon on the first and third Sunday of each month. Uh, so please let me know if you can serve in that role as well. Okay. Speak with Scott if you're interested in helping. Sarah. Huh. You uh, did such a lovely job talking about the mic box that the only thing you didn't have was the visual. Ah. <laughs> All right. Um, this is our first rally we're going to. Um, and um, so it, the mic boxes is a habit that you have to kind of get into. Uh, I usually get two. You're welcome to take two and have one by the door. Or, and one in the one in the laundry room is great. So when you find that change in the pockets, you just throw it in the mic box. And then another habit, uh, even harder than that, is remembering to bring it to church. Now, you don't have to bring the box back. You can dump it in a bag, gee, or a plastic bag. But um, it's amazing what they can do with our spare change. And uh, it all, you're also supposed to say a little prayer for missions as you put the money in. Thanks. Thank you. Prayer is on the back of the box. Prayer oh, is no. on the back of the box. <laughs> there it is. There you go. <laughs> or you can always make one up yourself. That works too. Are there any other announcements? I see we have refreshments ready for you for our fellowship time. About 11 o'clock, we'll reconvene for our Bible classes and our Sunday school. Hope to see some of you during the week, but I certainly hope to see all of you again next Sunday. God's blessings. Mm -hmm.